Hello, YouTubes! Welcome back to James Recommends. This week we're going to talk about Distant Star Revenant Fleet, a uh, roguelike in the vein of FTL. In fact, it's very clear that inspiration was drawn from FTL, but the problem that they were trying to solve was to make the combat in the game more interesting. And so to do that, they gave you an entire fleet of ships and then made the combat, real-time combat, uh, sort of along the lines of Homeworld which in a lot of ways sounds great. And in fact, part of the reason I'm recommending this this week is because I want them to go further with it. Because the game right now is in many ways unpolished, uh, but the fundamental idea is sound and interesting. But what I really want to talk about, what I found so fascinating, and y'all are going to kill me for this because I'm sure this is not what any of you care about at all, but maybe I'm underselling, maybe, maybe you do, maybe you guys will find this fascinating as well, is a decision they made with edge scrolling. So, edge scrolling is when you move your mouse to the edge of the screen in order for the screen to move around right? You see this in RTSs all the time. StarCraft, Total War, any of these type of games that use RTS elements will allow you to mouse the corner of the screen to move the screen around so you can uh, move quickly about the map much quicker than having to move over to the uh, arrow keys because usually, usually you've got one hand on the mouse, right? And then another hand on WASD, but a lot of the WASD keys are hot keys for other things. So those aren't movement keys for the camera. So they let you use the mouse so you can look around the battlefield, so you can assess the situation, so you can make uh, sort of movements and strategic plans across a larger distance than just the frame of one screen. But when are you going to want to do that? Often in the heat of combat. And you're going to, especially in a game like this where there's a lot of long range stuff, where with, with these big ships you may well have plenty of things a screen length away firing at you, you're going to want to immediately go and say, hey, move mouse up here, click on this guy, tell everybody to attack this guy, right? They made this decision on edge scrolling, and I'm sure there are some of you who will find this positive because no design decision is 100% perfect for everybody. Uh, but they made this decision on edge scrolling where you go to the edge of the screen, and if you watch the game carefully, you'll see that your mouse will hit the edge of the screen, and about two seconds later, it maybe it's less than that, maybe it's about a second later, it will change icons and then your screen will start to scroll. Uh, it also scrolls incredibly slowly. We can talk about edge scrolling speeds. I've heard anywhere from 1% to 5% of your map per second, but a lot of that depends on gameplay. Uh, but what I found really interesting here is this decision because as designers, you need to think through, you need to put yourself in the position of the player at, whenever you're making any design decisions. And I'm sure there was some behind this one, but when you sit in the player's position and you think about yourself actually playing the game, right? And you think about that moment, when are you doing that? Well, you're doing it in the height of combat. You don't wanna to have to wait for the mouse to decide that you really mean that you want the map to move at that point. So putting that one second delay, and it's very clear because they actually chose different iconography for the mouse when it moves from being move around the center of the screen to okay, now the edges are actually scrolling the screen. Uh, by putting that one second delay in there, you feel it, right? You feel it every time because you're in the middle of intense combat. You really need to go take out that small artillery ship in the back. And now you gotta wait an extra second, right? Because you gotta wait for your, your mouse to move. Uh, and so you end up pausing the game a lot more just to move the mouse. And it really slows down play, right? And it's these small decisions, it's these very tiny things that do affect uh, the overall feel of the game, right? It's these, it's all these half percent decisions that take a game from being a 75 to being a 90. And so this week, I wanted to point that out to you just because it's an interesting thing if you do look at this game. I don't think the game is bad. I think it's unpolished. I think there's a lot of polished stuff they need to do. Uh, I think the idea is interesting. It's something that in a polished version, I would certainly play the heck out of. Uh, so this week, I'm just going to recommend it, and you can go look at the design decisions yourself. So this week, James recommends Distant Star. See you all next week.